My name is Richard Shear, and this is Montpelier City Forum. We're going to be talking about town meeting, and this is one of a series of shows. We'll have all three districts, and we'll have the school budget, we'll have the city budget, and we'll have parks. In this case, we're back in District 2 again, my district, and we have Alex Geller, who's running for council for the first time. Hi, thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Where in District 2? I live on Kent Street, which for those who don't know is right off of Ridge Street, pretty close to the college. Okay, and for those of you who don't know, our gerrymandered city, <laughs> uh, District 2 goes all the way from Murray Hill down to Berry Street. Yeah, 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 it does. Yep. No, go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting district. Uh, it's it's pretty large. Uh, it kind of goes down Hubbard Street uh, for a ways, and uh, yeah, and it just uh, snakes its way through our neighborhoods. Yeah. What's the commonality there? I mean, you have high income on College Street, you have low income on, on Berry Street. Yeah, it's certainly a diverse neighborhood for sure, uh, or district. Um, I think it's you know that's one of uh, Montpelier's greatest strengths is is, is our diversity uh, in demographics, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Is Montpelier a town or a city? Uh, that's a good question. I, you know, I've always referred to it as a city. We got the capital here. Uh, that says a lot. But it definitely has that kind of town feel. Uh, you know, you walk downtown and uh, you inevitably run into at least a couple people that you know on a busy day. How long have you been in Montpelier? Six years. Yeah. What brought you to Montpelier, Vermont? Yeah, so I met my wife, and... Um, it did, always starts that way. I know, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Life starts when you met your wife or your husband. It does, yes. Um, so I met my wife. Uh, we lived in uh, Waitsfield Valley, uh, and I had been in uh, Montpelier for uh, probably eight years prior to that. Uh, excuse me, in Vermont, eight years prior to that. And uh, we were looking to settle down. And quite honestly, I was looking to uh, find an apartment in Montpelier with her. And uh, we looked for months and months and months, and we couldn't find That's anything. That's Montpelier. I know. Yeah, it's, it's uh, unbelievably low vacancy, right? And uh, so we started putting some numbers together, and I was shocked to find out we could actually afford a mortgage. And so if we could just find the right house, uh, we would be all set. And luckily, we did. And it, took, it took a while, and uh, the, our house was on the market for all of two days, and uh, you know, we, we lucked out. Big time. What can the city do about housing in town, realistically? Yeah, great question. Um, so the way I see it is we have two major problems. We have seniors that are really looking to downsize. There's over 200 of them that have joined in a group. Um, and we also have young families that are really uh, struggling to get on the property ladder, not only because of price, but because of availability, um, which has the effect of driving up price. Um, so that's, that's really concerning to me. And, you know, for us in particular, uh, just the cost of, of, of ownership and to rehab a house, we ended up having to do a lot of the work on our house ourselves. Uh, we didn't have the luxury of being able to hire somebody to do that work. So uh, that, I see those as the two problems. And the solutions that I see, um, I'd really like the city to focus on improving our existing infrastructure, our housing infrastructure. How would they do that? Yeah, so um, we have some underutilized houses, I think, that are, you know, let's say 3,000 square feet, and maybe there's a couple people living in them. And that's problematic because it's, we're not really utilizing those, those houses for the era that they were, were built in. Um, back in the 1900s um, or at the turn of the century, the average, uh, house, the average household size is about 2.5. Uh, excuse me, it was five, and now it's 2.5. Uh, so our demographics have changed substantially, and so those houses that were built 100 years ago aren't meeting the needs of today. So, I But like they to, still exist. They still exist, and they're beautiful, and they are what make up the character of our neighborhoods, right? And that's what everybody wants to preserve here is the character of our neighborhoods, and I think that's a beautiful thing that we do need to preserve. And so what I'd like to see is those houses... Uh, filled with people again, um, you know, appropriately. And so I would like to see the city um, incentivize uh, remodeling these houses or making them handicap accessible 
or ADA compliant. How would they incentivize that in your mind? Yeah, so we have a housing fund, which, yeah, we do. which is great, and I'm really thrilled that we do. Um, and I think it does great things. And I think that's, that's the avenue that we want to go down. We want to perhaps funnel some more um, money into that fund and expand the scope of services that they're allowed to dole that money out for. Were you following the master zoning plan, the revision of the, of the master a zoning plan? A little bit. And I'm familiar with the increased densities in nearly all of our neighborhoods uh, that are permitted now. Yes. Did you feel that the... I mean, it was a long, protracted struggle to yes. come to that conclusion. Yeah. Did you feel that it improved the city? And, and if so, how? Well, uh, I think that remains to be town, seen, either. right? Yeah. Uh, we'll see how the policies of the zoning um, affect the city, and we'll see what happens. Uh, like I said, it's very expensive to build in Montpelier, so we may not see all that much change. Um, so I think inevitably, as as uh, you know, a, a general trend across the nation, we have populations that are really concentrating um, on, on cities and uh, with services and, and, and that kind of thing. And that's an inevitable trend that's going to continue most likely. Um, so our population density, our housing density will likely go up. But what I'm seeing right now is that we, we built our city with houses that were really large and we're, we're not filling them with as many people as we used to necessarily. And so what I'd like to see is let's take our existing infrastructure and right size it. Make, How would you do that? Yeah, so um, I think we have some houses right now that are, uh, like I said, not fully utilized. They're large and that, you know, there's just a what, couple people. What, you take a house there. into a duplex or something? Possibly, yeah. And incentivize it. Leave it up to the owner to do that, to make that call. Not Certainly not allow the, the city to make that call, but incentivize it. Um, you know, we have some houses that are perhaps not as um, well kept as others. And what if we could incentivize, uh, if, if necessary, you know, taking those down and rebuilding them with something that meets the needs of today? Is that'll increase, um, you know, the, the neighborhood aesthetics. Um, we don't have to bring new utilities to that infrastructure. Well, we certainly don't need more water. Yeah. <laughs> we have water capacity. Yes, we do. We more do. More than enough water capacity. Right. But if we're talking about building on uh, Greenland, um, which we have in very, very short supply, um, you know, we're also talking about incurring major infrastructure costs. We have to build a road out there, power lines, utilities, all that stuff needs to go out there. And then all that traffic pattern changes, and so that has other considerations. Do you too. think that Saban's Pasture will be built in, in your children's <laughs> lifetime? Do you think we'll get housing soon <laughs> I, I on think, Saban's Pasture? Yeah. And if so, how would you see the development of Saban's Pasture? So I, I think that's, that's largely a decision that's up to the, the Zorzi family, the owners of the property. Um, I think there's been any number of efforts to figure out what an appropriate uh, solution to that area is. Um, what I'd like to see is certainly along the Berry Street corridor there, I, you know, we have all that infrastructure there. It's ready. Um, I know the, the uh, VCFA is, is uh, pursuing um, the possibility of building some, some housing there as well. And I think that makes sense. We already have the infrastructure there. It, there's nothing that is truly spectacular. Well, we about also have infrastructure coming from the distillery. That's true. Right. Yes, absolutely, which, which I think is fantastic. Um, so that, that can really prop that neighborhood up. Um, and that certainly that first you know, 500 feet or so from the road, the setback, I, I don't see why we wouldn't try to encourage um, building of new homes there and new, or new facilities or whatever the zoning uh, kind of prescribes, right? But the, the upper part of the pasture is, it's a gem. And, and if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend um, asking people that have, uh, going there yourself. Um, it's, it's a true gem. I don't know, uh, I'm not a, a planning expert by any means, uh, but I would love to see that preserved somehow. In March, when yeah. city council is elected, they meet in a caucus and they determine their uh, their goals and their objectives for yeah. the next year. Yeah, I'm going to put you on that council. You won. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in a hypothetical, you've won. You're sitting in that room. 
Mm -hmm. What's your goal and objective? You can get two goals and objectives that you would like to put on that whiteboard yeah. for the council to look at. What areas of expertise would, do you bring that you would like to see go on that board? Yeah. Well, um, I'll step back a, a second. And I think that, you know, I've looked through the annual report and uh, the budget and all this, and I see all the goals that we have. And we have a lot of goals. There are so many goals. And I just, I, I wonder sometimes if we're not spreading ourselves too thin. If we could instead concentrate some of our, our efforts Where on would a you few concentrate? major goals, I think that would be great. Give me a few major goals. Absolutely. The economy and housing. Two, those are two beautiful goals that I think we could really, uh, we could make a lot of progress on. So for housing in particular, if, if we can uh, facilitate seniors being able to downsize, and if we can uh, get fam uh, young families on the, fam on the uh, housing ladder, I think that would be beautiful. And uh, our economy. So how many, how many visitors are we getting? How many businesses do we have? How many, um, how many livable wage jobs do we have in Montpelier? Uh, and what do we want that to be? What's our target, right? Uh, I think those would be great things for city council so to focus on. So you supported the... Um Establishment of the Economic Development Council. Oh, absolutely! I, I was yeah I was actually involved in in some of the uh, the forums that they hosted. Um, I participated in that, and I I've read the report, uh, and I I think it's absolutely fabulous that the city um, uh, decided to focus on this opportunity. Yeah, using the food and beverage tax mm -hmm. to finance the effort. Yeah. Absolutely. What about our infrastructure? Oh, what about it? Um, <laughs> Everybody yeah. complains about our infrastructure. It's yeah. your turn now. Right. So I actually have uh, somewhat of a background in infrastructure planning. Oh, so? Um, so I work for uh, the state, and uh, so, so my, my specialty is, is information technology. And uh, what I have been working on recently is asset in the asset management domain. Um, and now, they have a saying yeah. that you can only be young and dumb once, but you can be old and stupid a long time. What is asset management? Okay, yeah. Asset management. So uh, you look at that fire hydrant, that bridge, uh, that sidewalk. Those are all assets that the city has. In fact, our buildings are assets too. And it's, our, it's, uh, it's enormous. that We have so much maintenance that we have to perform on all these assets. And I think as some people realize, our roads are crumbling. Um, and underneath the roads. And on, yeah, our water mains are bursting. Uh, we, have, we have really old infrastructure. You know, we're a New England town. And um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I'm, I'm so happy that the city council has been um, paving the way, no pun intended, with their uh, capital improvement plan uh, by steadily increasing funds uh, to devote to infrastructure planning and investment and I think that's that is definitely part of the solution we are underfunding our infrastructure we have the highest tax rate in our area yeah and one of the highest tax yeah. rate municipal tax rates in the state mm -hmm. how do you do that and still maintain yeah. an affordability that allows young people to get that foothold that you want in our community right so one of the things that I really hope to bring to the council is my knowledge and experience uh, with asset management software um, at the state level. And I'm really happy that Department of Public's work, Public Works just purchased um, a software package. It's called Beehive. It allows them to understand how many hundreds of thousands of assets do we have? What condition are they in? And what makes sense to work on first, right? Because we're always going to have a limited constrained budget on our assets. We're never going to be able to fund it. So there's always going to be that constraint. So you, it's not about um, fixing everything. It's about figuring out how do we prioritize this and how do we get the most value for the taxpayer. So if we can start making smarter investments through, um, you know, uh, spraying our bridges, spraying the salt off, off of our bridges that extends the lifespan of those bridges even longer. If we can, uh, you know, if we find that crack sealing our roads extends their lifespan even longer, then we're starting to bend that curve. Right? We're starting to get more value for our tax dollars. In terms of getting to staying on the infrastructure, yeah. um, the rec center. 
Yeah, on Berry Street that used to be the armory. It is mm -hmm. one of our uh, older buildings that's still in public use. What would you do with that? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I walk by it every day, and I admire it. It's a beautiful building uh, from the front, for sure. And uh, that I, I'm aware that there are some structural issues that prohibit a lot of different types of uses that would be desirable there. Um, and I'm not really entirely sure. Um, I think if we can find some use for it to preserve it, that would be fabulous. Uh, but there's always that housing need. So if the city could possibly divest and reinvest in something else, uh, like, our, like our infrastructure that we are having a really hard time maintaining in the first place, I think that would be wonderful. What about the net zero vision for downtown? Fabulous. Yeah. How so? What, what's your, it's got the tram that yeah. goes up to National Life. Yeah, it's, it's got the did, white water park. Exactly. Right? Did, yeah, did that got, look realistic to you? Uh, you know, I, I think those are intentionally aspirational. Absolutely. To, to help you envision what's possible, you know. Um, so I work at the National Life Building, so I'd love to see a tram. I, <laughs> do I think it's reasonable in, uh, in the next uh, 10, 20, 30 years? Eh, maybe not, but we'll see. Um, I think there are aspects of that plan that are definitely worth considering. I would love to see uh, total re-envisioning of our parking. Um, How so? Yeah, so. I sat on the parking committee. So oh, wonderful. I, 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 we went through meeting after meeting yeah. on that. But what's your view on parking? Because everybody complains about parking too. Yeah, I, I don't because I walk to work, but um, I'm fortunate enough to do that. Um, so parking, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's a very complex problem, right? We have a lot of employers in town. We want to bring more employers in town, which means we're going to need more parking. We're building uh, possibly another hotel, which is going to have even more increased need for parking, right? So um, I, I look at this uh, from a transportation background, and I think, well, what's coming in the next 10, 15, 20 years? And I'm what I'm, one of the things I'm really excited about is autonomous vehicles. Um, in that, uh, it, if, if autonomous vehicles allow us to reduce our car ownership, um, say, you know, I, I move from one car down to uh, two cars down to one car, then that's one less car that has to be parked. And if instead I hail a ride to work every day. What with, is an autonomous vehicle? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so an autonomous vehicle is a vehicle that uh, typically uses electric uh, battery power to propel itself, uh, but it also has uh, a lot of very sophisticated computers on it uh, and sensors that allows it to navigate neighborhoods uh, actually safer than a human. Um, certainly, in the, right now, I think they're at about two times as safe as a human. In the future, they're hoping to get to about a thousand times as safe as a human. Do you driving. see these, what is, now we're speaking in the future, we're not speaking yeah. next year, but... Do you see these as jitneys that are going around the neighborhoods like the circulators do? Or? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, it's going to be tough to, to envision exactly how it's going to be. I know our transportation services, our um, you know, GMTA, they're extremely interested in this because the, you know, one of their major costs, aside from maintaining these GMTA vehicles, being Green Mountain Transit sorry, Authority? Yeah, Green, yep. Um, one of their biggest costs is personnel. And, uh, you know, so that is a very attractive thing to them. If they can automate a bus route, that's, uh, that's a wonderful thing for them. Um, but I think there's also that Uber model. If, if people aren't familiar, it's a smartphone app. You can hail a ride like a taxi. Um, and uh, if that can come to you without a driver and then drop you off at, say, half the cost because there's no labor involved, um, then, then that's a game changer, right? It's not so expensive anymore. Yeah. But do you get. think Uber and, and that will ever take off in a town of 7,500? Yeah, well, there's already an Uber driver here. Absolutely. Uh, I, and, you know, uh, Chittenden County, uh, I think Uber is a little bit more common, and it, it, it's a growing trend. But, yeah, I think we have, uh, I heard, uh, we have one Uber driver right now. So, <laughs> and a couple yeah. of Airbnbs in town. Uh, and a couple of Airbnbs, and we have a taxi, you know, right, this year, exactly. and who knows when next year. But, yeah, I think it, if our population continues to grow um, and uh, the need is there, I think there's, there's a lot of possibilities for the Ubers to, to come here, yeah. You've looked at the budget. Are there any areas yeah. that you feel that we could 
revisit for cost savings? Yeah, so I think with, with my experience, what I know about infrastructure planning, um, I think that we can uh, reduce the amount of maintenance in our infrastructure if we do thoughtful, careful planning, uh, and that's reinvestment into our infrastructure. It's not gonna be an overnight cost savings, but certainly a long-term. Uh, the other thing I'd like to get away from is how much we bond. Um, yeah, so we, we bond for things that uh, we know full well are coming down the pipeline, and, and that's a little what bit... What does that mean? Yeah, so when we borrow money, for example, for, uh, to, to put a new roof on a building, we knew that roof was going to be, was needing to be replaced the day that we installed it. Right? Roofs have a very, uh, you know, 15, 30, you know, uh, year lifespan. Metal roofs, I think, have a 100-year lifespan, right? So all this stuff. So we should have started saving that day instead of borrowing money to go and fix that 20 How years you, later. We were back to the Al Gore lockbox. Yeah. How do you, in a, in a city budget that's this tight, mm -hmm. how do you save that? How do you put that aside yeah. when you've got competing needs mm -hmm. going? Yeah. How do you how do you set up that lockbox? It is it's really difficult, and you need to you need to figure out how to squirrel away the money where you can and when you can, and so that it's not uh, severely impacting the services to our citizens. The um, the human service budget, the allocation of a hundred thousand yeah. dollars for human services that that we as a community deem necessary, is that necessary in your view? Human is, services. Yes. The, yeah. So the different can, agencies. Do you want to give some examples specifically? Sure, the teen, the teen center. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Again, there's a committee that, that divvies out $100,000. Yeah, so the community fund. Exactly, yeah, okay. community yep. fund. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Montpelier is a very caring place, and that's also what makes it so attractive, right? Um, we are a caring community, and I think it absolutely has a place in our budget for sure. Now, of course, this being a small town, what about the dog issue? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I own a dog. Um, I was at city council last night uh, just to observe, and it uh, looks like the leash law is uh, getting ever closer to becoming a reality. Uh, this is, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that uh, we have to put ordinances in place to make sure that... Um, uh, Owners uh, are responsible with their pets. Pets are going to do what they want. Owners need to control them. And uh, as a dog owner myself, I, I realize that every day. And, uh, you know, unfortunate things happen. And, uh, you know, a few bad apples, um, you know, change ordinances, for example. Um, I think, uh, you know, this is not uncommon. I think there's a lot of other communities that struggle with the same problems. And... Um, I'm, I'm sad to see it, but, you know, uh, I think it's probably the right thing to do. Moving the farmer's market up onto State Street yeah. and downtown development, Yeah. what's your view on the farmer's market? Move? I love the farmer's market. Uh, I'm all for it uh, being in the street for, you know, uh, a, a, lo a relatively low traffic time of day, uh, especially where there's alternate routes that are not terribly inconvenient, um, and I think it's probably a boost to... Uh, a lot of the businesses downtown in general. So absolutely love it. I, th I think uh, Montpelier draws in a lot of people from other communities that come to our, our farmer's market and we should do everything we can to support it. If you're on council, yeah. you'd be on various different agencies. You know, the, there's someone from council on the public safety commission, there's someone on the library board, there's someone on Montpelier Life. Yeah. Which organization would you choose? Yeah, so I'd, I'd love to engage with um, uh, DPW and, um, and really focus on our infrastructure because that's that, I think that's where my, my expertise uh, and background lie. Um, also, to the extent that I can lend my experience in information technology, um, I think that would be well leveraged. Uh, so, yeah. Um, other than that... Um, I, I think Donna Bate is already maybe the liaison between the Parks Commission, but if there's any opportunities to, uh, to engage with, with that or the How would you like to see Hubbard Park change? Um, I, I don't think it should change. I think we need to um, 
we need to recognize that it's a great thing and uh, it's perhaps at the point where um, there's too many competing priorities for it and let's 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 continue a good thing and look for other opportunities to expand our recreation right so uh, north the area the section of woods between North Branch Nature Center and North Street um, right now town property and there's a vast ski trail going through it, a couple footpaths, not really much going on. Um, the local mountain bike chapter is advocating heavily uh, to, to build some mountain bike trails there. And I think that would possibly relieve some of the strain on Hubbard Park right across the road. Um, I think that would be wonderful. One final question. Yeah. City council people, you've watched city council for six years now. Yeah. Is there a city councilor that, that you feel that you would model your style after? Oh, geez. Past or present? That's, that's a good question. Uh, I think I have, um, well, how about this? I've, I've sat in the last few city council meetings, uh, pretty much the, the whole, uh, you know, three, four hours. The marathon. And, yeah, right. And so the current council... Uh, I've, I've, I guess I've appreciated uh, John Holler's uh, uh, ability to facilitate those meetings. I think he's very effective and respectful. Um, and, and I've also, I've, I've respected um, uh, Ann Watson for her perspective. Uh, I think she, she brings uh, great counterpoints to the argument. And, uh, and, and uh, Justin Turcott. Uh, I think he's really fantastic in terms of uh, getting into the weeds of things and really breaking out the magnifying glass and uh, understanding some, some pretty challenging concepts. Jeez, that's a diplomatic yeah. answer if ever I heard one. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming. Yeah. It's been an excellent conversation. And for the people who are watching this, You've been able to see one candidate. We have all of the candidates in other shows. We also have a presentation coming on the city budget, as well as a presentation on the school budget. But the most important thing is that pick up the bridge, read what they, they have to say. If you get a chance to meet these people, I've, at this point I've met them all and they're excellent candidates. And I would urge you most importantly to get out and vote and urge your family to get out and vote on town meeting day and urge your friends to get out and vote, because that's the vitality of our community. We've got tons of commissions. We've got tons of panels with the city. Join a committee. Join a commission. Engage yourself. Thank you so very much for watching.